I looked around my apartment at the piles of unfolded laundry and dilapidated boxes. I'd moved in more than two months ago, but it still looked like a very colorful tornado had kicked the shit out of the place. I simply didn't have the energy to do anything about it. After walking away from a relationship that I thought was forever, I was single and starting over. Trying to put my life back together felt like a terrifying task. So for now, I was gonna calm my anxieties with some Cheerios and the cast of 90 Day Fiance. Possibly the only people whose life seemed like more of a train wreck than my own. I grabbed a bowl, dumped in some cereal and milk, and pulled open the silverware drawer. Looking inside, I realized my mistake. I had exactly one fork, one knife, and a shit ton of wooden takeout chopsticks. Not a spoon in sight. Tears welled in my eyes. What kind of depressing loser doesn't even own a spoon to eat her sad, lonely, depressing Friday night cereal with? My lack of appropriate cutlery felt like an Alanis Morissette-inspired metaphor for my life. <laughs> Only, it wasn't ironic. It was just fucking sad. I had spent so much time and energy contorting myself into something wifeable, and I didn't have a damn thing to show for it. Not even a fucking spoon. In a frustrated huff, I chucked the cereal, bowl and all, in the trash and took my pathetic ass to bed. And like any emotionally competent millennial, I sought solace in my phone. I felt like shit about myself, so why not seek validation from somebody else? I've always been a little bit of an attention whore. It really explains my chosen career as a high school teacher, a captive audience whose sole success relies on paying attention to every word that comes out of my mouth. I am here for that. The world of dating apps opened up a whole new audience to me. Sure, the whole field is a bit of a cesspool with unsolicited dick pics lurking around every corner, but online dating was also a great distraction from my actual feelings. Hey, look at all these people who want me. Maybe I won't die alone with 200 cats. So I laid in bed, swiping my way through Bumble until my hand went numb and I dropped my phone on my face. In the morning, I was bombarded by the consequences of my late night swipe fest. My inbox brimmed with profiles. Apparently, when you feel pretty shitty about yourself and your lack of adult spoons, you're happy to match with Igor the Cyclops and every other douche McTool you come across. <laughs> After sifting through the PB Bros, the East County Trumpers, the Fuck Boys, and the unemployed jujitsu enthusiasts, I decided to take a chance and message a remaining match. Derek was nothing that I ever thought I wanted in a partner, but I clearly didn't know what the fuck I needed, so I figured I'd give it a shot. He was a teacher, strike one. We are fucking crazy people. He was a coach, strike two. That's a teacher on steroids, with more yelling. Bumble said he was only two miles away. Strike three, don't shit where you eat, girl. And he had kids. Strike four, I have 175 kids at school. I'm good. But he was hot. What did I have to lose? My dignity? I threw that out with my soggy cereal the night before. After a couple of days of messaging, Derek and I agreed to meet up for a beer. And despite all the things I wanted to dislike about him, 
I had a really good time. Our conversation flowed easily and we laughed a lot. Our next several dates were similar. And I was thoroughly enjoying the process of getting to know someone new. The more I learned about Derek though, the more questions I had. But I wasn't looking to get into a serious relationship again. So when little red flags waved in my direction, I just waved back and went on my merry way. The fact that he made my lady parts melt didn't hurt either. <laughs> About a month into our situationship, Derek posed a question to me. Do you think you have a capacity for the amount of love you have to give the world, he said. I struggled to fully understand what he was asking me. Like, am I gonna run out of love someday, I asked. I'm not exactly on a quest to find my Prince Charming, I said. I hated the idea of ending up alone, but I was also pretty sure I was dead inside. No, I mean, do you think you're limited in how many people you're capable of loving? He corrected. I wasn't sure where this conversation was going, but I was certain I did not want to be on board when his train of thought arrived at its destination. I don't believe in like soulmates or any of that bullshit, but I get that there's lots of different kinds of love, like the way I love my grandma is different from how I love my dog. Ooh, and I love glitter. Oh, and Betty, my sourdough starter, I rambled. Hun, I don't think you're hearing me, he said. I love you. He put his hand on my shoulder gave me a condescending squeeze. Dumbfounded, I didn't respond. I love you and I love other women. I'm at a place in my life where I'm not gonna put a cap on who and how I can love. I think it's selfish to limit ourselves and say we're only meant for one person. It's our beast mentality, our animal programming, he concluded with an awkward flex. <laughs> okay, I mumbled. My tongue felt like it had glued itself to the roof of my mouth. My skin was simultaneously on fire and numb. And I'm pretty sure I was sweating and shivering and my chest felt tight. This was supposed to be a incredibly casual relationship. Why was he using the L word? I gave a nod that apparently satisfied him enough to change the subject, and we moved on to a incredibly competitive round of Mario Kart. And the L word didn't come up again. About a month later, I was wrapping up a baking frenzy, packing fresh cookies into containers, and Derek sat at a bar stool at my kitchen counter, looking blobs of cookie dough off of a spatula while working on his computer. Do you ever bake, like, gluten-free stuff? He asked casually. I can, I said. I just generally don't do it by choice. I knew he wasn't gluten-free because he'd inhaled every cookie, cupcake, scone, and slice of sourdough I'd offer him, often taking a container full to last him until we hung out again. I thought, maybe you could make some stuff without gluten, you know for Stephanie, he said, my other girlfriend. I cocked my head to the side like a confused puppy. Um, what? First of all, I was not his girlfriend. Second of all, who the fuck is Stephanie? Derek steepled his fingers like a Disney villain, unveiling his master plan, and said, the woman I've been living with. She's gluten-free. She's also my girlfriend. 
This was all news to me. To be clear, I didn't actually care that he was seeing someone else, but he was acting like this was common knowledge between us, and it most certainly was not. <laughs> we talked about it the other night, he added, when we played Mario Kart. <laughs> he chuckled and put his condescending paw on my shoulder again. He explained that he had met Stephanie about three weeks ago and then moved into a spare room in her house with her and her mom. I wasn't really sure why he was telling me all of this. I'd made it clear that I had no interest in an exclusive relationship and that our situation was fine with me. I want you to meet Stephanie, he said. I want you guys to be friends. Then the two of you can work out a schedule and maybe I can stay with you on Tuesdays and her on another day. And we could pick a night for all three of us. <laughs> Was he seriously proposing some sort of timeshare style boyfriend custody agreement? I'd heard some crazy shit in my time, but it's usually coming out of the mouth of a 14-year-old boy in my classroom, <laughs> not a grown-ass man at my kitchen counter. N no, thank you, I said. <laughs> I have enough friends. This was a fucking lie. Most of my friends were married, had kids, and had little time left to hang out like we used to. Still, this was not the kind of friendship I wanted. I didn't want to be anybody's designated Tuesday. It would mean a lot to me, Derek went on. I want you to learn more about me by building relationships with other people in my life. I want you to know and love my tribe, he concluded. It sounds like you want me to bake gluten-free treats for your potential sister wives and streamline your social engagements, I shot back. I didn't want a serious relationship with this man and it was starting to feel like I was being roped into much more than that. I couldn't even hobble together enough spoons for one person, much less three. I don't know why you're angry, he said. This is about love. Was it though? Or was it about having a consistent source of sex and sourdough on speed dial? I rolled my eyes so hard, I could have given myself a concussion. I'm not angry, but I'm also not interested. We are clearly not on the same page, and I'm pretty sure we're not even in the same fucking book. I think you should just leave, I said. I moved to the door and I held it open for him. Confused, he fumbled to gather his belongings and slid his laptop into his purse. <laughs> okay, he said, but I'm gonna keep the reservations I made for your birthday in case you change your mind. It's for seven o'clock on Tuesday for a party of three. Derek had never sent me a dick pic, but suddenly he felt slimier than any of the lewd messages that ever landed in my dating app inbox. Was this man seriously trying to indoctrinate me into his harem? I shut the door in his face without saying a word. And I waited to have that familiar sense of loneliness wash over me. Next would be the realization that I was alone, again, and the overwhelming urge to grab my phone, text Derek, apologize, and tell him to come back. But those feelings didn't come. Instead, I felt strong. I felt like a fucking badass. I had just stood up to a man who was clearly trying to manipulate me, and I told him to get the fuck out. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I had chosen to be alone. And it was scary. But fuck, 
it felt good. I don't think we have a limit on the number of people we can love. I've learned that you can't truly love someone else until you learn to love yourself. I know that the love I had for my grandma is different than the love I have for my dog. I know that despite being 37 years old, I am never going to stop loving glitter. I know that I'm not defined by my collection of spoons or lack thereof, and I definitely know I am nobody's Tuesday, and I am not joining a harem, especially not a gluten-free one. That is Vamp, first timer, Jessica Young. <laughs>